Hello everyone, Crash here, this is RTA Motorsports, and today we're gonna go over Dirt Rally with the OSVR. I'm gonna show you how to get it set up, and we'll show you some gameplay, so hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. Okay, so what we're gonna do, it's very simple to set up. Now that Dirt Rally has Oculus CV1 support, um, we could use our Revive Injector as we have done with Aceto Corsa, for example. So it's, it's not as, I would say, as easy to use or as intuitive as the Aceto Corsa one, but we're using that same hack, essentially. So what we're gonna wanna do first is we're gonna wanna go here uh, this is the same GitHub that I uh, linked to the last video. I'll link it in this description as well. And instead of using, I believe we used the Steam Games um, hack before, what we're going to use is the standalone games hack. So you want to download the Revive Injector and extract those files. There's going to be um, four different files. Well, two different files and two different, I believe they're executables or whatever they are when you're done and you extract them you're gonna get these here so you get the two um, applications and the two files so what you want to do what worked for me which was pretty easy to do is you just highlight all four of those and then you're gonna to want to go over to wherever your dirt rally is installed um, for me it's on a different disk drive one of my um, SSDs go to Steam library Steam apps common dirt rally and you're going to want to put it in here where the executable for the game is so depending on if you're running a 64-bit or a 32-bit system is dependent on which injector you're going to use i'm running a 64-bit uh, system so what you're going to want to do is when you drag it in here you take the dirt game itself and you drag it over the revive injector x64 now it's important to know that you must have your Steam VR up and running. Uh, you can see it down here. You must have your Steam VR up and running. You must have your OS VR up and running. So all that needs to be connected first. Once you drag the Dirt game over the Revive Injector, we're gonna go to the next part right now and you're gonna see the game up and running. From that point, it's pretty simple. So um, again, we're gonna get everything up and running, including the butt kickers. Um, we're also gonna do the dashboard as well. So we're gonna see how taxing this is on the system. Um, if we're starting to experience some issues with frame rate issues or whatnot, I, I can tell you from my prior tests and my prior videos that I have done when I was using TriDef, uh, this method seems to be not only a lot more immersive and a little bit smoother, um, but it's a lot less taxing on the system as far as the TriDef uh, version goes. So you're gonna experience a lot better frame rates because TriDef itself does kind of tax your system quite a bit to take um, any sort of video that is not 3D render it as such and then it does a lot of processing in the background to make you know background objects where they should be in 3d space um, with this it's it's a heck of a lot smoother and a lot easier to do so anyway we're gonna cut that and we're gonna go straight into the gameplay here we go okay so we're gonna go into dirt rally and I'm gonna show you exactly just how easy it is now you can see on our screen here we do have the compositor up, we do have Steam VR running, we're ready to go, we have the OS VR going. So, at this stage, all you're gonna wanna do is, yeah, let's change the scene here so you can see what's exactly going on. All you're gonna wanna do is take this dirt here and drag it right over the Revive Injector X64. You can see that it's running there, and now it all changes. You can see the background changes almost to like a tire tread sort of pattern, and you have the game right in front of you. Now, the only thing that's a little bit sort of annoying that, well, it's not necessarily annoying, but I haven't figured out how to change it yet, is that in order to uh, recenter the, the head mount display, at least there is a button, but it's the left control button on your keyboard. 
I have a little wireless keyboard that I use here that I, I got on a Black Friday deal for next to nothing. Um, so it works for me. I have a left control key. I just keep it right down here to the side of me and I kind of feel around the keyboard whenever I need to press it. But I, I, I'm guessing there's probably a way to change that somewhere in a config file. I just haven't been able to find it yet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with at the moment. So, all right. So if you're just popping into the channel for the first time, a little bit about my rig here. You see we have the Thrustmaster TX wheel with the 599XX rim. We have the um, T3PA Pro or the T500 pedals. And I do have a brake mod on that uh, with some RC car hydraulic shocks to kind of give it some hydraulic feel. Um, and we have the T3PA, oh, not the T3PA, the uh, TH8A shifter um, with a uh, knob I just randomly <laughs> threw on it. We do have um, Sim5 going with a butt kicker, uh, Gamer 2, and we do have Dash Meter Pro going right now. And now, of course, with the OSVR, you do, uh, this especially being 1.3, do have the screen door effect, uh, you know, 1920 by 1080 across both eyes. So you do got to lean in a little bit to kind of read the uh, the menus and see what's going on here so as you can see in just a moment we're going to be kind of just right into the car itself look at that now one thing i do notice also and it probably has to do with my room scale settings is that we're kind of like behind the body a little bit i can see my co-driver and I do have all the windows open for lighting, um, so it kind of does create some IR issues. Um, as you can see there, we're kind of just floating off out the window. Uh, but, you know, you could look around. It's really cool. You could lean forward and whatnot, but we are a little bit back. So you use your numpad or whatever you have set up as your default uh, buttons to move the body around. Let's see. There we go. A little bit better. All right, let me recenter. Center, there we go. And I'm sure I'm going to be using that button quite often. Stick it in first gear. Actually, I'm going to go off in second gear. Why not? You can see my foot going. Look at that. Now, I haven't practiced this stage at all, so I'm sure we're going to destroy the car at some point. I'm not going to go for any sort of huge records here. Whoa! Okay, we were behind the seat there for a second. Whoa! Ah! I do have damage on, so I'm actually surprised that it didn't <laughs> completely destroy the vehicle. Now, my headset is jumping around quite a bit, and I am a little bit baffled as to why. It's probably because I have all the windows open, I'm guessing, and all the light is kind of flooding the front of the monitor. I don't know. And you can see that with everything on, my frame rates are kind of taking a little bit of a hit. Um, in the headset, it's still playable. But it's not what I would say to be, come on, come on, it's not what I would say to be perfect by any means. I'm definitely going to have to adjust some things. Oh, <laughs> it definitely bugs you out. So let's actually get out of here and we're going to adjust some settings, go into a different track and uh, see how we do. 
I like this background that they have though. The background's pretty cool. So let's go to options. I know I could have adjusted it while I was in the track, but snow, I, you gotta practice these stages. You can't just jump right in. <laughs> As you can see, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. So let's go to graphics, and I think I have it on high, yeah, as a preset. Let's let's go to medium. Uh, see, let's see how that works. Just a medium. Now my system that I'm running is an um, art. Well, I have two cards, but right now it's running off the single because whenever you load up VR, it's in windowed mode, unfortunately. So it's an R9 390X, uh, the Sapphire edition, the Triax version, and. For GPU, I mean for CPU, it is an AMD 8350 overclock to 4.5 uh, gigahertz. It's custom events, rally. Actually, let's do some hill climb. Why not? You can already see like in this menu, I've already lost center. So I'm going to just hit left control again and we're good. So you can see we're in the menu system still. And... Uh, Let's start to run. Now we're in the vehicle. That's awesome. But and it looks like my placement actually stood pretty good. All right, not bad. No co-driver by myself on this one. Come on. You definitely get a freakish sort of sense of speed, even though the resolution of the screen is not the best. I am floating around a little bit, which I haven't experienced before. I kind of wonder... All right, this is an issue. Where the heck am I? <laughs> what the hell was that? And I kind of wonder if it's because I have all of my, you know, my sim vibe and my uh, dash going. I am recording from this computer, so I don't know if that could, you know, create an issue at all. As far as, I know it creates an issue as far as frame rates, but I wonder if it's creating an issue as far as you know, you floating off. Who knows? I know I am kind of flooding this room with light at the moment, which is not optimal. All right, we got it. We got to adjust that. We're going to stop this car real quick. Hello. And let's close this shade here. And let's see if that improves this situation as far as me floating off into the left rear tire of my car. Now I did do the video tracker calibration setup. Nope, I'm still floating. And I didn't experience this the last time I actually tested this out. I actually had no tracking issues whatsoever. So, you know, and that's that's kind of the thing. It's like every so often, ah, every so often this happens. So you can see that I had my preset on high and the reason why was because when I wasn't recording or anything and it was just me on this system, I could run this at fairly smooth frame rates on high. It probably has to do with my OBS settings. Probably going to have to tweak that, it's probably being a little too taxing on my system.
the shifting is killing me. I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that and kind of seen how to get it working and what the gameplay is kind of like. Now, do not judge my experience on what you might experience with an OSVR. Reason being, I do have a lot, lot of lights here, I do have a lot of the windows open, and I am just kind of trying to flood the room for light uh, just to increase video quality. Not something you really care about when you're in VR space. So there's a lot of glare on the front of this lens here that may affect the IR camera's performance. Uh, you have that, you have the fact that I'm running OBS, which, you know, is my settings are probably or definitely not the best at all. And then you also have that I'm doing SimVibe, the dashboard, the gameplay, whatnot on my system. Uh, you did see I had to lower my graphical settings down to medium to make it run smooth for the video. Um, or at least seem smooth in here if the video is a little choppy. That's not what I was experiencing in the headset itself. I will say though, on normal sort of gameplay occurrence, I could run it on high without any sort of issues at all, without any sort of stuttering. It's a very smooth and fun experience. I've been playing over the past three days um, for hours, for hours on end. It uh, doesn't really fatigue my eyes at all, and it, it's a pretty darn enjoyable experience. You got to get this, you kind of get this head floating experience um, where the car is moving around, but your head isn't. It's almost like your head is not locked inside the cockpit. That's a little bit unnerving and kind of makes it a little bit harder to control the car. Um, I did read somewhere that people are actually able to adjust that in the INI uh, files, but I haven't gone that far yet. But um, the, you know, the tracker is that's something I've never experienced before. So definitely something to keep note if you want to live stream or whatnot. Try to have your lighting kind of set up just right. Um, Hopefully your OBS settings are better than mine and definitely uh, proceed with caution. Maybe do a test video first, but I wasn't able to actually prevent that from happening when I have everything going on. Uh, in a normal sort of room setting, as far as lighting goes, darkness, without OBS on, I have no tracking issues. So I'm not exactly sure what the conflict is there, but definitely keep that in mind. So as usual, I hope you all had fun. Um, if you're a sim racer or a racer in general, have a great day. Keep on racing and see you all out on the track next time.